everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com, and this is a COVID-19 update. As you are all aware, this is a very difficult and trying time for the entire world, including the members of our community, and we've had several questions come in to us. I wanted to bring Dr. Mark Gilanov into the conversation. He's live from Cleveland Clinic. Dr. Gilanov, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Great. Thanks for being with us. So everybody on the phone knows Dr. Gilanov is the chairman of the Cleveland Clinic, uh, specifically the Department of Cardiothoracic Surgery. He's also the co-author of Heart 411. He has performed several surgeries on patients in our community. And Dr. Gilanov, very quickly, maybe you can uh, just share with our folks your dedicated um, commitment to valvular therapy in your own practice. Well, here at the Cleveland Clinic, we do all kinds of heart surgery, of course, about 4,500 operations a year, which makes us the busiest center in North America. The majority, the majority of our operations are for heart valve disease. And of course, we have percutaneous therapies like TAP or MitraClip, but we do an enormous number of mitral aortic valve operations. My particular interest is robotic mitral valve surgery, specifically robotic repair, where in appropriate patients, we can make a little incision like this and get all the work done through a tiny incision and speed recovery. Yeah, and as uh, Mark, you're, you're, Dr. Gilanov, you're aware, we've, we've been working together now for probably about 10 years, and I can't thank you enough, not just for the care that you've provided in the past, but also for being on the front line uh, in this very, very difficult and trying situation with COVID-19. And I wanted to thank not just you, but your entire team for all the care that they're providing to the patients out there who so desperately need it at this time. And so maybe we can talk now a little bit about COVID-19. Uh, we've obviously seen uh, a, a, a surge here in the United States in cases. We've uh, seen some, a lot of confusion about treatment and therapies. And so this is really a session for us to answer some of the really big questions that have come in from our patients around the world. And the first question, Dr. Gilanov, I wanted to ask you was, um, can you please discuss uh, all about the risk factors of patients with heart valve disease, aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation? Are, are folks with these diseases at any higher or lower risk to uh, get infected with COVID-19? Well, certainly people with untreated or uncorrected heart valve disease are at increased risk. I'm not talking about mitral valve prolapse where your valve works great, you just have a little bit of prolapse. If you've got severe valve dysfunction that hasn't been fixed, aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis, et cetera, then you are at increased risk for complications if you do get infected by COVID. And when, when you mention complications, Dr. Gilanov, which complications might those be, if you know, at this time? The most prevalent serious complication is pulmonary failure, ARDS, or adult respiratory distress syndrome. And it appears that people who have comorbid conditions, meaning other diseases, like heart disease, are at increased risk for developing pulmonary or lung failure if they get infected by the coronavirus. Got it. And another question, beyond the uh, risk factors for patients who have not been treated, are the questions coming in from patients who have been treated? Those are the patients who may have already had an aortic valve replacement, a mitral valve repair. Um, are those patients, one of the questions that I'm seeing here, are patients who've already had a device implanted, are they also at more risk than patients who have in the general population? That's a great question. We don't have data to answer that. But uh, here's what I think is true. I think if you have normal heart function and you have normal heart rhythm and you've been treated with a valvular procedure, whether it's an aortic valve or a mitral valve, normal heart function, normal heart rhythm, and you've been treated, you're probably about the same risk as the general population of both getting coronavirus and having problems with it. If you've been treated and you have heart failure, reduced heart function, other cardiac problems, then you likely fall into a different risk category. And those patients, even though they've been treated and are being treated, have some increased risk of complications if they get infected. Got it. When, when it comes to the question of treatment, we saw last week uh, a, a, a shift almost in care for patients specific to elective surgery. 
and there was uh, a recommendation, some news that elective surgeries should be put on hold. And that raised a lot of questions for the patients in our community. Um, but before we get to that, can you share why elective surgeries have been put on hold? We're thinking of it more as essential versus non-essential surgery, not meaning a surgery needs to be done or not done, essential that it be done now versus not essential that it be done now. And the reason to put them on hold primarily is to conserve resources for what we anticipate may be a huge influx of very sick patients. That's personal protective equipment, blood, operating rooms, ventilators, and staff. So we want to be ready, if necessary, to care for people who are critically ill. And therefore, for what we've decided on a case-by-case -case basis is non-essential, not meaning you don't need surgery, but you're gonna be fine waiting. We are, are waiting. Got it. And Dr. Gilanov, let's relate that now to the valvular population, which, you know, the progression of the disease, as you know much better than me, can take years to occur. And it can go from mild to moderate to severe. And there are certain optimal times when surgery is recommended. I guess the, the big question that patients are having right now is valvular surgery it considered to be in that category of procedures that are elective. It depends. We actually are undertaking a careful review of every single case. We go through the patient records, the echo, and the question is this for each case. The question is, if we delay this operation by eight weeks, are we going to increase the patient's risk of a bad outcome? And are we going to be subjecting the patient to eight weeks of severe symptoms? So if somebody, let's say, has um, saw a patient today, he's got severe mitral regurgitation and his left ventricular function, meaning his heart function has already decreased somewhat and his heart has already enlarged somewhat. So I don't want to delay his surgery for two months because there could be a cost to him. So he'll get surgery tomorrow, actually. On the other hand, if we see somebody who says, I feel fine, I've been running daily, I have no symptoms, and we do an echo and we say, and your heart function's completely normal. Yes, you have severe mitral regurgitation, but everything's completely normal. That person can wait a couple of months, and it's probably in his or her best interest to wait until all of this passes so that that person doesn't get in the hospital and run the risk of being infected by, you know, in the hospital, there are hundreds of thousands, hundreds to thousands of people. So better to wait in that case, but it's really a, a case by case decision. And for the valve patients at home, if you feel fine and your doctor says your echocardiogram looks great except for your valve, you can likely wait. On the other hand, if you are short of breath going up a flight of stairs and your ankles are swelling and your echocardiogram shows some early damage to your heart, you should probably get that done. Understood. And so Dr. Gilanov, we, we have seen some patients in our community um, who have had their surgeries postponed. And for one reason or another, and obviously we don't know exactly what's happening at their hospitals, but what, what do you recommend for patients who might have some concern? They've been diagnosed with severe heart valve disease. Perhaps they are symptomatic, but given the situations of COVID-19, and as you talked about the constrained resources, what would you recommend to those patients at this time? If you've been postponed and your symptoms are getting worse, you're getting shorter breath, a lot of swelling of the ankles and what have you, I would contact your surgeon or cardiologist and let him or her know I'm getting worse, meaning this delay is costing me. On the other hand, if your surgery has been postponed because it was, it was deemed that it's not essential we do it right now, and you're doing fine, keep doing what you're doing. Of course, in relative social isolation, but that doesn't mean you can't exercise, especially the mitral valve patients. Mitral valve patients are often told, don't exercise. You can. You can exercise, I'm sure. And, and thanks, Mark, uh, Dr. Gilanoff, for all the time that you've given us. I have one final question for you, and if there's one thing I know about you individually as a person is you really are the type of um, 
surgeon who advocates for their patient on every level before the surgery, obviously during the surgery with your incredible skill sets there and after the surgery. We've always had many conversations about cardiac rehab. I guess the big, big, big picture question that I'd ask you on behalf of our community is what advice do you have or tips of advice or best pieces of advice that you have for patients with valvular disease at this time? With valvular disease, same advice as without valvular disease. Do everything that your local and state governments are recommending, meaning uh, wash your hands, social distancing uh, to the point of isolation if you are sick. My biggest fear is as I leave the house and everyone's at home, am I going to bring the illness to my home? And if I do get sick, I'm going to isolate myself. Because while almost everyone recovers from this, there are some who don't. And if you follow the principles of social distancing, washing your hands, and if you are sick, isolate yourself from others, you will help not only yourself, but your family, friends, acquaintances, and anyone you encounter. Right. Well, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Gilanoff, for your time today, for the care, again, for your team, everybody there at the Cleveland Clinic, and for your ongoing commitment to facilitating the health of people and their heart valves, their cardiac conditions. Can't thank you enough. And um, I just want to, again, share our appreciation for you and your entire team there. So thank you for being with us today, and we will be talking to you in the future. My pleasure. All right. Thanks, Dr. Gilanoff. You're welcome. I've got to go operate a little bit. We are still open for business. All right. Great. And everybody, we'll be going ahead and putting up a, a, a slide after this. We'll have all the information for Dr. Gilanoff so you could reach out to him if you'd like to contact his office. Thanks again, Dr. Gilanoff. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye-bye.